Hola, 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 buenos días a todos, o buenas tardes, buenas noches, no sé qué hora es donde tú estás, pero hola. Hey, everybody, this is Tasha, Tasha Teaches Spanish with another episode of Hablamos, oh, not Espanol, surprise, Hablamos Chino. Ooh, yes, we have a melanated Chinese speaker um, on our program tonight, and I'm so excited, estoy muy emocionada um, to have with us Ashley Wong. Did I say it right? Yes. Because, of course, naturally, to you, the audience, I wanted to say Wang. Ashley Wang, you know, Wong. Wong. She told me to say it as though there's an O there. And that would help me. Wong, Wong. So, hey, Ashley. Hey, Tasha. How are you? I'm doing well. Estoy bien. Um, I'm so excited to have you. For you, the audience, Ashley and I go way back, like, to um. To, to college. And I, I think if I remember correctly, Ashley probably was the first black person or melanated person that I knew that knew another language because Ashley was a couple of years ahead of me in college. And so she had already, you know, entered her program. And she's going to tell you all that, you know, not my business to tell, but she had already in her program. And so I knew her and it was already intriguing. Like, hey, it's a black person learning Chinese. And I don't even think I had decided to be serious about Spanish yet. So uh, I definitely uh, have for a long time admired Ashley in her in her journey. And tonight you and I will learn something because, hey, it's a lot I don't know. But either way, uh, thank you for joining us. If this is your first time viewing the program, hola y bienvenido. Normally we do talk, talk about Spanish, but the purpose of this program is to highlight anybody that is contributing to the diversification of foreign language learning. So often as melanated people, we don't see ourselves in foreign language spaces, so we don't think we belong there, and other people don't think so either. So the purpose of this program is to show folks that, and show ourselves we can learn other languages, it is for us, and you can do it. Puedes hacerlo, si se puede, no? So uh, let's let's dive right in. Let me stop talking. And guys, I'm going to be learning just like you because I don't know any Chinese. Normally, you know, the, the guests and I will dialogue. <laughs> no dialogue for me tonight. Okay. So let's dive in, starting with your introduction, Ashley. So we know your name is Ashley Wong. Wong. Uh, where are you from? Um, so I'll do this in English and I'll do it in Chinese for those who don't know. So Waja Ali, some people call me Ali, but I go by Ashley. So watch your I truly watch your um, make orders. I'm American, was I um, Arkansas? So I'm from Arkansas, so I'm an Arkansas person, so red means people. So watch your Arkansas, red, so I'm Arkansas person. Um, watch your Little Rock, red, so I'm from Little Rock. Mm, it sounds like you're saying something that sounds like washing, wash all. <laughs> so it's wa, which is I sure is. So washer, so washer, little rock, person. So I'm little rock, person from little rock. Oh, washer. Am I saying that right? Washer. It's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on next. Okay. Um, your job. What do you do? Uh, and 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 you person more than a job, so you don't have to only talk about that. But overall, what do you do? Oh, so a washer. Oh, I can get my wrong languages together. So wait, Spanish. Okay, washer. Um, don't want to sure. So I am a Chinese teacher. Washer. Don't want to lecture. Zai. Um, East Dim High School. So I'm a Chinese teacher at East Dim High School. Um, while I share now the don't want to e r san se. So I teach Chinese one, two, three, and four. Hmm. How did those numbers sound? Can you repeat just one, two, three, and four, por favor? Oh, um, no problem. So E is one. E? R, e. So it's the first tone. So E. E. Is one. R. R. Which is two. San, which is three. San. Su, which is four. So Su. Yeah, because it's the four tone. It's really, um, it's like really d direct. It's so when you hear Chinese people talking, it sounds like they're um, fussing or yeah. arguing, but it's not that. It's just that that tone, and there are four tones in China, or there are five, but you usually use four. It sounds like you're arguing. So when you say, it's, like, it's like when you say, stop. So when you say stop, it's really hard. That's the same way you use the four tone when you're pronouncing that word. When you said su, I'm going to tell you what I thought about. What's the song? <laughs> huh. Ha. Yeah. What is it good? That's what I heard. 
that that same ooh ah and whatever the name of that song is. I guess it's called War. War, yeah, right? War. war. Because in war, you feel like you can feel the aggression when it comes to when you're hearing it. It's the same thing with that right. fourth tongue. Mm -hmm. Boom. Okay, I made a connection. Okay, <laughs> next. Uh, continuing in in in, in uh, Chinese, your your pastimes. What do you do in your free time when you have free time? What are some of your pastimes? Why yeah, show she. Why yeah, my dong she's. Why yeah, yeah. Shifan. So I like to sleep in my pastime, like because you know when you're so when you're busy working, you don't get that much sleep. So my pastime like to sleep. So why ya shoshi, which means rest. So not necessarily sleep, but rest. Why ya drapana? So I like to eat because um, I love food, all like all types of food. So I like to rest and eat. Why ya my donkeys? I like to buy things, so I like to shop. So when I have free time, when I'm not teaching, so why ya shoshi? Why ya my donkey? Why yeah? Um, what else I want to do? Why ya chir chirpan? So I like to eat food. <laughs> why ya must mean I like. Why ya? Is that I like? Why ya? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that means um, I like I like these things. Or you could other people you say why yeah, like I want to in my break time. So why yeah, it's more like I want to do these things. But I mm. like is why she won. So why is I she won is like. So you could mm. say why she won, or you could say why yeah. Why so, yeah. I'm learning something new today. And as I'm, I always like to connect stuff to whatever the language is to what I know. And when I hear that, why y'all? I don't know if you remember the old uh, cartoon, Jackie Chan Adventures. <laughs> and, the little, and the grandpa would always say, hi, y'all. I don't know what he's saying. It wasn't why y'all. I don't know what he was saying, but it, it sounds similar to me. So that's what I think of. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. When I first started learning Chinese, I... When I write in my book, I would write what it sound like in English, what word or, or if I could spell it out, what it would sound like in English. That's what I would do because mm -hmm. I wasn't used to, you know, hearing or seeing those words because Chinese is not my first language. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I, I definitely use that in, I call it association. I definitely use that in Spanish. You know, what does it sound like in English? What can you connect it to? And, and that'll help it stick. Okay, tell us about your family, whether the family you come from, the family you created. Whatever, you know, whoever you want to discuss, but tell us a bit about your family. Oh, make sure, which means no problem. And so, why y'all? Uh, so, it's son good So, I have maybe not son. I'm trying to think how many people are in my family. Uh, so, why the mama, why the uh, good good? So, I have why the mama, why the baba. So, my mama, dad, why the uh, good good. I have one brother. So, I have one, my mama, dad, my brother, why the JJ, my sister, Wada Lala. So, Jong um, Fu, my husband. So, my mom, my dad, and my uh, brother, and my husband. But really, it's just Wada Jong Fu, Hu I. So, just my husband and, and me. I had to keep thinking because I'm thinking in Chinese and trying to think in English. And then my brain. Well, no, and, and Ash, let me, let me say this too. Normally, I didn't stop you because I didn't want to seem rude, but normally you just do it all in the first language here. And at the end, we clarify in English. Oh. So I don't, I don't, if, 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 this, if this is confusing, you go straight in Chinese. I don't no, have to know what you're saying. My brain is thinking like I teach like English, like this limitless class, and I teach Chinese. So I go back and forth between the classes. So I was like, I want to make sure I say that correctly to you all. So, so it's, so it's, what, uh, so I think there, uh, what a Jore, what a Ja, what a Mama, what a Baba, what a, uh, Jeje, what a Guga, um, what a Jong Fu. So, why yo, uh, Wugurin. So actually, so I have five people in my family. My mom, my dad, my sister, my brother, and my husband. Mm -hmm. Sorry, y'all. No, think. You're fine. Now, Baba, I could remember that one because that's often used in African languages. Baba. So I yeah. could remember that one. And then uh, the one for husband, it sounds like junk food. Jung -ju. I don't yeah. know what you said, but it, it sounds like junk food to me. <laughs> it's close. Junk food. So Z-H-A. Junk food. Mm -hmm. Jung Fu. 
So husband, what a mama, which is mom, what a baba, which is father, what a guga, um, which is brother, older brother, um, what a JJ is older sister. So I'm the youngest of my brothers and sisters. Oh, la baby, you're the baby. Okay. And that was words for, for mama, baba, gugu. That sounds like baby talk as well. <laughs> That's what I hear, baby talk. Okay, muy bien. Eh, ¿Qué más tenemos aquí? Your favorite, well, is, I'm not going to know this one, but your favorite song in Chinese, if you have um, one, or just name one of the many, and then your favorite Chinese singer. So, wait, what? Okay, I got to get back in. Uh, what yo, what a, my favorite singer. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I have one. His the. Don't worry. You can do it. We go watch you on J Cho. Um, just mainly J Cho. What face she? What face on she on J Cho? They really. I just like this one artist. So I didn't think about. Do I like anyone else? <laughs> there are some other good artists. But do I really like them? Can you repeat his name, please? J Cho. J show. So like J A Y C A O I. See, so sorry, not O I. O U, sorry. Oh, yeah, I right hear Ta Taiwanese. Yeah. Isn't he an actor? Uh huh. This one was like, which one would I like? You yeah, know, I don't, I don't even know him as a singer. I only know him as an actor. Yeah, he wow. has. Wow. That has some Spanish in it, and it was in Cuba. It's not, I think it's like a few years old, like maybe one or two years old, maybe, maybe one year. It's a song that he was singing in Spanish and it was in Cuba. Oh, that's so nice. And, and he, he is really multicultural because he's from Taiwan. And you said he just sang something in Spanish in Cuba. He's broken into the United States entertainment industry. So he's on it. You, you all can Google him, J-A-Y-C-H-O-U. He's from a couple movies. You'll know his face. You'll know his face. So now, if you can think of it, and it's the last question, <laughs> favorite Chinese song or one of the favorites? Um, favorite Chinese song? Oh, so favorite Chinese song. Or favorite Chinese song? No, what's the name of that? So I know it's a. Uh, there's two I like, Ting Mama the Hua, and that's by J. Cho, but the other one is not by him. And it's as a thing for a second, because um, someone actually a student at ASU many years ago told me about the song, and I still love it now. Uh, Lao Nan Hai, yeah. So, Wa Fei Shang Shi Wan, Lao Nan Hai. That's the name of the song. What does that mean in English? It's loud, it's old, non, it's man, high. It's a, so I mean, it's like old boy. So translation is like old boy. Okay. So it, there's a lot of like, uh, I think it's a very memorable song in China. So if you talk to someone who's Asian, the chances are like 99.9% .9 that they know this song. It's like when you hear like a song, like, like the song. Something about Michael Jackson. Yeah. Like people know, like if you're, yeah, if you're talking about a song, or if you like living in the United States and it's like that song is like born um, proud to be American, regardless if you know the words, everybody knows that song. It's the same thing about this song, but it's not an a American, it's not a Chinese pride song. It's just like reminiscing in the past. So they're like, oh yeah, I remember that. Okay. Well, so it sounds like if a person learning Chinese, that's the song to learn, to start off with, because you can relate to other people easily with just that one song. They, now, I mean. they should, okay, say an older generation would be able to, and I said older, but like if you're in high school now, you'd be like, oh, that's not the hip and cool thing. But if you're like a little bit older, you're like, oh, okay, this makes sense. So that's kind 30 of, and up, 30 and up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, then, well, that's it, El Fim. And you went, and really, we don't have to do the ending now because you went on and explained everything in English too. So we killed two birds with one stone. Oh. All right, that was really nice. And maybe you, the viewer, learned some things. Let me see. Let me see if I remember what I learned. I learned Baba. Okay, I learned. That's it. No, that's a lie. No, you I learned. I learned a, the word for husband. Sounds like junk food. Don't remember how to say it. Okay. Young food. Okay, I remember. 
Hold on, Ashley. I'm gonna bring one more thing. Give me one more thing. The one that says I like or I want to. Why? Why? So, why? why? And she won is like or why yow, which is I want. Why yow? Why yow? I'm gonna tell you what I do know, and now this stay with they stays with me now. The PBS used to have this show called Sagwa about three kittens that lived in a palace, right? And at the end, they always said, shir, shir. Thank you, shir, shir. I, I know that. If I don't know nothing else, I can make it with that. So. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm happy. You know, some people, they they try, they, uh, they learn. Like a, with, right next to my classroom is the, the Spanish class. So I had students who come into my classroom to get a laptop, and they're like, ni hao, and I'm like, Ni hao. So that's Finnish students. That's Finnish so students. Tiny. So they come in and they say, I say ni hao, which is hello. And I say, um, ni hao ma, which is how are you? And ni hao ma. And they say bien. I'm like, okay, okay, we'll take we'll take that. <laughs> but they haven't learned how. And they're, mixed, they're mixed it all together. Look. Yeah, but I'm so happy that there is a call a cross culture language thing that they're learning, but they come in and they ask stuff and they usually come in and they say, Ni hao lao shir, so that means hello teacher. So it's great. That's nice. Well, let's go ahead and dive into that. So since you started there, why why be a Chinese teacher? Why that of all things? What, what's the origin behind that? Then we'll get into why you started learning language, but let's go with you teaching right now. Well, right now, like teaching Chinese, I thought I was only going to be teaching like Chinese three, and it turns out I was teaching Chinese one, two, three, four. At this, I get it. I didn't know that I was going to be teaching all those classes, but that's completely fine. And I was like, okay, so my grant that I have is ending, so it ended in December. So I was like, well, I better look for a job while my grant is ending. So I said, well, I can teach Chinese. I can do that. And when the principal hired me, she hired me because she wanted to bring diversity to the school. So that's how I was hired based on diversity for the program. Because they had teachers before. It's just that they were Chinese, but now they're like, oh, we have an African-American woman, and she can teach Chinese. Oh, this is going to be really great for East Yeah, yeah it's, like, it's like a double win, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. I get it. What is that? So you've been there since December. I've been here since, actually, no, I've been here since is that uh, July. Like, I started, like, the, the beginning of the school year. Oh, okay. my first year teaching Chinese uh, at East Yen, but... Like I this I when I was in college I studied Chinese uh advanced Chinese one two uh for Chinese grammar, Chinese culture, then I studied Chinese while I was in China. So I can give you the translation, but here, you know, I studied um like Arkansas State, Julie Washi Jong one. So at Arkansas State University I studied um Chinese. Um was I um Shandong Tanjing Um so I studied um, at Shanghai University, um, economics and finance. I studied Chinese there too. So I've been studying for a while. But, that is beautiful. But it was weird because I studied in China to take a break from studying politics. I was going to go to China to study finance and economics, only to find out that uh, I wasn't really taking a break. Mm -hmm. well, let's go on and that's a good intro into or a good segue into the, the original first question, which is how did you get started in learning Chinese? Why Chinese? What's the origin story behind that? Does it start in college or does it is it even before college? It started in college. I was doing an internship for National Foundation for Women Legislators and I met a girl who is from USC and she spoke Chinese. And I said, and I was taking Spanish. No, no, I'm not dishing. Um, Spanish. It was just I was take, taking Spanish, and she was taking Chinese. I said, "She can learn Chinese. I can learn that too." And I was in my fourth. I think it was in my about to start my fourth class of uh, Spanish. And when you have different teachers, it get a little bit confusing. I was like, "I'm gonna take Chinese." So I was taking Chinese and Spanish at the same time. No, ma'am. No thanks. <laughs> it was. It was. It was like Ching Spanglish at night. I had. Um, advanced Chinese, and in the morning I had honor Spanish. So it would mix. So I told my teacher, I said, don't ask me any questions in the morning because I don't know how I'm going to respond. 
So he found out. I was like, I'm so sorry. My brain is just processing what it's thinking. So I, my brain would just put the word in that it knew. So if it knew it in Spanish, it knew it in Spanish. And if it knew yeah. it in Chinese, it knew it in Chinese. Yeah, kind of like um, I'm gonna start. Excuse me, interrupt you. So, kind of like it, you know, some people who speak English and Spanish, they speak Spanglish. You were speaking Changlish, yeah, Chinese and in, in Spanish. That's mm -hmm. or something like that. That's probably not, that's probably, that's the wrong combo. It wouldn't be Changlish. It would be Spanese, something like that. Anyway, because <laughs> it was it was interesting. Like my teacher didn't believe me. I said I showed him my schedule. I said see at night. I have been I have Chinese for almost three hours. Mm -hmm. Tuesday and Thursday, and I have you Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I said, so my brain is still thinking about what it was learning at night. So um, that's where it was at. That's where my where I said, okay, I can do this because I realized I could do. It. I just kept taking more Chinese classes, but I I never ended up taking the last Spanish class because I said I don't think I can handle learning Chinese and Spanish yeah. at the same time. I, I know I could, no ma'am. And then then you're going into an English speaking world. Too much. So I was like, oh. I'm like, I said, let me see if I can do this. But I realized I couldn't because I didn't have too many options. Oh, oh my computer's trying to work. I didn't have too many options because at that point, like, I could take the last Spanish class. Mm -hmm. I had to take honor Spanish, my last class, because I had taken honor Spanish one, two, three. So I had to do, take honor Spanish four. That would make more sense. Mm -hmm. So I was like, take honor Spanish four, or I can per persevere and finish out. Um, Chinese, what we did at that point, we only had one Chinese teacher take some more Chinese classes, and I did. So I'm glad I did. But I was, but, but, I let, but let, let's take it back even farther. So, okay, so for some reason, you started in Spanish. Okay, mm -hmm. well, why even start with Chinese? Where oh, you, oh, you just said it because you met the girl from USC. That's yeah. what it was. Okay. Yeah. I can do it too. I might be from Arkansas. Now, was she also melanated? Is that what also made a connection? Or she was European American? She was European American, but oh, okay. I went to this fancy school like USC and I'm coming from Arkansas State University. I can do that too. I mean, like we're interning at the same place. I mean, I'm smart enough. <laughs> I can do this. And I realized I oh, was what, what? What made you want to stay committed going through all those semesters? What made you want to remain in it? Well, I didn't have too many choices because you have to have four classes and I finished well, you had four languages. But I was like, well, if I'm going to take three of Spanish, I might as well just finish the foreign Chinese. But the foreign Chinese was accelerated. So I would get two. Um, so it been six credit hours for one class. So I said, well, I do this one. Second one, so I took the second class, and then before that, I was like, take grammar, and I can take all these other classes. So I was like, I can, I can persevere. I can do this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, is, that is a nice story. It just came from seeing somebody else do it, and you and you were serious about it. Um. So pretty much, the next question is, how did you learn? Which you already told us is through those studies. Um. In addition to studying in the classroom, um. Did you have any outside practice where you were having to do meetups with Chinese students or, you know, was there any learning outside of class? I had a like lot. Shows? I had a lot. I had a, actually, I had a Chinese family in uh, Jonesboro. So we all named, we all had, we all became, we became like one whole family. So everybody had their name. So I was like, Baba, I had a Baba. You probably know him. His name was, uh, some people call him Antonio. But his name was Joe Huedo. I promise you, if you saw him, if you know him, you would say, "Oh, that was your father." And then my uncle was Chong Ju, and he like they were all from different regions in China, but they were all my family. So if you saw them, I mean, if you saw me, like I do remember seeing him because if I was walking on campus, you would see me walking with him because he was a little bit shorter than me. Mm -hmm. He was working on his master's, so that was my father. I had an uncle, I had sisters, uh, and I had one brother. Yeah, I had one brother. How did you form those relationships? You just one day saw somebody and said, Hey, I'm learning Chinese, come here, you're my family. How did those relationships develop? Um, let me think. I'm trying to think. So, I'm my I think I met my brother because I played basketball in the gym, I met my uncle and my 
father because they were both roommates. So my uncle, my father, and my brother, they were all, they all lived together. But my sisters, they both were roommates too. So I met them at the BCM. So I think I met them doing something on campus. So they said, oh, we can help you. So they saw that I was serious. So I practiced, I practiced, I practiced. And the BCM is the Baptist Collegiate Ministry. Is that right? Mm-hmm. So I I met them there. Um, they had an event there on campus or something like that. Um, but I guess they saw that I was uh, serious about learning. It is just, I guess, because of my, my personality, I have a, you can easily make friends. So I, I guess how we easily became friends. And since then, even like now, we still talk, even though some of them are still here and some of them are halfway across the world, we still we still talk and communicate. That's nice. Look at you. And so I really I like that you took advantage of the people in your area, in your environment that spoke the language. And of course, it was nice of them to bring you in because that always matters, too. That's good. That's really good. Next up. Now, now, today, especially before you were teaching, um, but I guess I already know part of this answer, but <laughs> how do you keep your language skills sharp? Now that you're teaching, I'm sure that's one thing, but even before teaching, how do you how do you keep everything fresh? Well, I know you probably have used this program before, the um, Duolingo. Mm -hmm. I would practice Duolingo for like 30 minutes, uh, practice thinking in Chinese, practice talking in Chinese. My friend in Chinese, we would talk, she wanna make sure her English stay good since she's went back to China and I will make sure my Chinese stay good. So we both, we practice, but it's kind of like probably like with, with Spanish, you know, you sometimes you start probably thinking in Spanish because something makes more sense in Spanish than it does mm -hmm. in English. And that's how it is for me with Chinese. Some mm -hmm. stuff makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, I don't, this, this question isn't on the list, but I want to go ahead and ask it since it mm -hmm. came up and I don't want to forget. Um, tell us about your time abroad. You mentioned that earlier on. Um, yeah. when, when you went, I, and you, I think you said you went to get a break from politics, but um, can you talk about that as well? So uh, um, I studied abroad in um, um, Jinan, China, it's in Shandong province for a little over six months. Um, for me, that experience was really crazy, like in the beginning, because I was already stressed out because uh, my flight was late leaving out of, uh, Atlanta. So before I even left the country, my plane had already left before I even arrived at the airport in Detroit. So I was stressed out about that, but then it was okay. Or, oh, you just enjoy Seattle. Or uh, no, I mean, it was in Seattle. Enjoy Seattle a little bit. So I went to all the needle and things like that. Get back to the airport. Everything's fine. They put us in a hotel for a day. Then I get to China. And then I find out that my luggage has been going through like i haven't checked my luggage until i get like when i got there the one was my chinese friend the one was my baba he made sure that each of his friends in china would meet me at a checkpoint so one it made me the train and one made so the nice. Look at that. so they helped me all over china to get to the school so i i, I got to china he put me up in i think Beijing for, for one or two days. And then I took the train to um, the city I was in, in G9 and he friends there because he actually went to school at Shandong University and they helped me. But I didn't know at this time that I missed like half of the stuff in my luggage. No idea. <laughs> I was so stressed out because the things I packed were things that I needed. Like, I mean, I was like, why would somebody steal my stuff? Like, I, I don't know. But, you know, I found the claim and everything, but it's not the thing. It's not the same when your stuff is stolen. So I get there and they're very helpful. So check into the school and stuff like that. But I was the only American at that school. So that was more stress. Other students, like, they're not so nice. <laughs> I'm like, I'm the only American at this. School. And I'm thinking, well, y'all are international students too, but I guess people didn't like Americans. I don't know. We weren't that nice to me. You know what? I'll stop right there, Ashley. That is realistic because a lot of people don't realize this. I think if you study languages, you kind of kind of know because we have to study history and 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 
foreign affairs, America has done several things that other countries are upset about. And so when somebody from another place, you'll say you're from the U.S. and they're like, I don't like Americans. But they don't, to me, it's different. The Americans they don't like are the politicians. So I'm, I'm different. It's, I, they don't understand. It's a difference between what you're talking about. You know, you don't like Americans. What American you talking about? I don't like them either, baby. I'm on your team. But they don't, you know, they just, it's American, the end versus here. We all know our groups and our subcultures. But abroad, you're American, the end. So, yeah, that's really re very realistic and realistic that you won't be liked, possibly. Um, can you give an example if it's not too traumatic? Um, what, well, they weren't so nice. So, what, so what, what's an example of them not being nice? So there is this place, like, I don't know if they, they, have, they probably have this, like, in other countries. They call it Food Street. So on Food Street, they have food and things you can buy, like, little household things. Like, it's, like, on a dirt street or not such a dirt street, but it's, like, in an alley or something, like, you know, when they show like Chinatown and they show alleys and stuff, but this is what they call food street in that, in that city. So you could buy stuff, but the other students like did not, did not want to take me to food street. Like, they may have been there a couple of days. Like they were like, they make their people groups and they already got in their cliques. There was only one student that did not do that. And it was a Czech student. So I did learn Czech while I was in China <laughs> and we're still friends now. Um, so he helped me, like we traveled all across China together because the other students, the international students didn't, didn't want to travel with me. So yeah, I don't know. It's so messy, my Lord. But it's realistic, it's realistic, that's real. Okay, okay, so okay, now let's let's go back. So you were there in China studying the language. Is that that's what your program was, so I have that right? Oh no, I was studying economic, no, I was studying international trade, finance, Economic. in Chinese not necessarily sometimes a teacher would try to you know teach it in Chinese I was like uh-uh uh-uh no <laughs> even though she knows like actually it's surprising because I think that may be where the issue was I knew Chinese before I went there but right. the majority of the other students so let's say the 15 no so the 10 of us only like me and another student actually spoke Chinese so they weren't, they didn't know Chinese. So it's kind of hard to teach Chinese in Chinese to students who don't speak Chinese. Correct. Correct. Okay. So it, so it was mostly taught in English. Mm -hmm. This is just so much diversity. Everybody's from a different country, but y'all in China, but y'all getting the class in English. It's so many levels to this story. Yeah. Wow. We had a Chinese class together, but I didn't need the class, but they put it on my, um, on my schedule for classes to take. So I said, okay, I can take this uh, um, class. Then I said, why not? Since I'm here, so I can keep my Chinese like refreshed. What, and going back to you being on the American, were you also the only melanated person or there were people from Africa and other? I, at that groups? school, international, yeah, I was. There were, it's so sad because there were other people who, I think they were like African that were in China and they were like, you not like us? I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? We are the same. Oh no. <laughs> so it was it was a real big culture shock. Like they like like disowned me in China. Mm, my Lord. Like, now how did you meet them? They were students as well. You just walk in, you know, you go places, you buy food and stuff, you go to the market and you try to like take a taxi, you see, you see someone like you on the street. You and you get excited, them. right? You get excited, like, yay, cousin. Yeah. You're like, I don't know you. <laughs> like, ouch. ouch. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what they say, you know what they say, uh, all skin folk and kin folk, and that's international. That's international. Um, let me see. And this this is the last question I think I'm gonna ask about the broad the broad experience, then we'll move on. Um, so you, since you already knew a lot of Chinese, it wasn't, it didn't feel too strange being there, did it? Cause you were already comfortable with the language and you were able to use it or how was that? Well, that's when you really find out if you know a language, like you know it, but when you have no other way to say like, can you help me in English? Maybe there's nobody to help you in English. So you really have to like pull together what you remember I, I remember thinking um, one time I was taking, I took a train and you get out the train station and you know, I'm not, I don't take the train in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. I don't know about taking a train. You don't have any trains. So, <laughs> well, I mean, Amtrak, maybe, you know, in a couple places. So I 
take the train with um, with the Czech student who doesn't speak really that much Chinese. Mm -hmm. So uh, I look and I see the sign and I'm my brain, I'm racking my thoughts. I said, are we ever going to get to the taxi part? And when I saw it, I said, that means taxi. That means I knew my stuff, even though I had not used it in a while. I said, that means taxi. I said, I don't even know how it's pronounced. I said, but those characters, that means taxi. So we keep on walking and we get to the place where you can take a taxi. So I was like, yes. Yay, confirmation. <laughs> confirmation. That's good. That's good. Okay, this is the last one. I'm sorry. I, I lied. You're fine. You're fine. That just sounds so cool. You said you were there for about six months. Yeah, because I it was like I left in February and I came back in uh, July. So the question is, I don't know if you ate Chinese food before you went, but what did you learn there that maybe was a lie about what we know as Chinese food? Well, for me, I knew what it was only because I was around my Chinese family and it was oh. But when I before I knew, that, I was like, "Oh, we're talking about sesame chicken. That's not Chinese food." That's Americanized, and Chinese food is like a one part meat, a two parts vegetable. I think it's one part meat, two parts vegetable. Like that's the best way to say it. So I try to tell people that. I said, so when you have something that's like fully loaded with meat, no way. And I feel like I've eaten authentic Chinese food once in my life. I can't remember, but just through, I guess, or maybe you saw it. It seems like authentic Chinese food is kind of more light. And nutritious, excuse me, and not heavy and greasy. That's what it appears to be. Yeah, that's right. It's not like I guess. What do you call? Mm, I guess something that's really close. It's like broccoli, like shredded. It's beef and broccoli. I guess that would be close to what they would eat in China. But yes, it is tasty, but it's not heavy. It doesn't feel heavy on your stomach versus when you eat something here. It's like super fried. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. And like, oh, it's heavy, but you know, it's not always like that. But you know, they always make this joke in English. They say, well, you know, you eat Chinese food, you'll be hungry in like two hours. They had a joke here. Cause it's not really like, like, I guess your body's not like really feeling it. It's like, okay, I just ate this quick meal and now I'm hungry again. But if you eat like Chinese, Chinese food, you don't necessarily feel hungry in two hours. So mm. that's good. That's good. That sounds like a really interesting experience and thank you for sharing that um and as I, that's a whole nother interview in itself i could dig, keep digging but i'm gonna move on <laughs> when you first started learning chinese back in college what did you find most difficult um in, in the beginning stages Ooh, difficult was i think the amount of students that were in the class because it said we had 21 students in the class and I don't know anything about the language. And really, I just need some one-on-one -on -one so I can understand. I think that was really where it was. But when we went to Chinese, Advanced Chinese 2, like, we went down to, like, eight students, eight, seven, seven or eight students. That really, like, made me feel more confident in what I knew versus students. I'm going to just take Chinese. And, you know, they were done. They weren't going to take the next class. And then the ones who were really serious, took the um, Chinese grammar and cultures class, stuff like that. They mm -hmm. were serious about learning Chinese. So I knew that I could do it, but I just needed a smaller learning environment. That's honest, that's realistic. Okay. Is there anything years later today that's still kind of difficult for you? Um, that's still kind of Sometimes it's the grammar. The grammar still is different because it's almost like a broken language. Because, you know, if I could think of it as a broken language, I could put a sentence together sometimes because, you know, we have our our noun and our verb, subject noun verb agreement, but it's not necessarily the same timing. So you can't like put it together the same way. If you read it, if you think the way you think in English, it will not be a correct sentence in in Chinese, it just won't. So yeah, you have to kind of restructure your whole brain. Mm -hmm. like. That was the hard part. Like I, I had to think. I look at it. I go word by word. That's how I used to learn. But now I read it through, and I don't think that anymore. But it had it used to. It used to be like that for me because because my English brain was thinking like grammatically. What this doesn't make sense. Okay. <laughs> 
Next up, how has learning Chinese benefited you personally, professionally, or in any other way? And you've really given us a lot of that, but in addition to what you've already said, is there anything that comes to mind about the benefits for your life? What you wouldn't have now, wouldn't have done if you didn't want to start learning the language and culture? If I had not started learning Chinese, I would have never had the adventures that I had in China, which caused me to step outside of my comfort zone. Like here, you know, you, I, you live in Arkansas, been to other states, stuff like that. But in China, I did things that I felt more freer to do than I would have. I would never have done in the United States me to grow as a person and try things that I would not have tried. Like someone said, hey, this is the a delicacy, things I would have never tried. Like someone said, oh, it's a festival. You should eat these spicy moths. There's no way I would eat moths in the United States. <laughs> I wouldn't eat. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't try those things. I wouldn't uh, take a tray. If I didn't learn Chinese, I probably wouldn't have taken a train. I would fly or drive. Mm -hmm. I, the things I, I just wouldn't, I just would not have done um, the options that I did have. Even climbing, like they have like different mountains. I definitely would not have done that either. That has never been like all my little things I really love to do. Climbing, some people, you think from art, so you can climb a pinnacle, but still, that's never been at the top of my list the things that I love to do. But being in China makes the experience cause you to do things you would have never done. Um, travel to places because I didn't just stay in a city where I studied. They have a lot of holidays. I've been to Shanghai. I've been to Beijing. I, I think I've been to Guangzhou and, and Nanjing. It's been a lot of different cities. I went a lot of places in China that I would have never. It's like going across the whole United States in like less than six months. You don't do that usually. Mm, that's true. Like around the world in what, 80 days? Is that the movie? Yeah, that's yeah. what it felt like. We were always traveling. It's like, hey, let's go try this. Let's go do that. Only one trip I never took. And the teacher, the Chinese teacher recommended me not to take it. She said, because of the altitude of climbing the mountain, she said, I don't think your body can handle it. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. Fine with me. If you don't think I can handle it, I'm completely I'm, okay. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it. They told, other students told me it was horrible. It was horrible. But they made it. They climbed all night and they got to the top to see the sunrise. <laughs> no, 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 no. They, I would have, once I would have gone and known it was horrible, I would have stayed at the bottom and I see y'all on the way down. No, no, no. <laughs> they climbed all night. No, ma'am. No, thanks. All night. <laughs> all right. Next up. Um, people automatically assume when you learn any other language that you're just going to be rich. Like, oh, you people have said, you, oh, you're making big money. You know, you know, Spanish. I'm sure you heard that with Chinese. Have you? Well, I'm saying I'm sure that's the question. Have you gotten that a lot? That, oh, you're going to be rich, must be rich, you know, you Chinese. Know, oh, you, this is the thing people always say, oh, you can get a job anywhere. I mean, the thing is, you, there has to be a need for what you can produce. But um, people say, oh, you can get a job anywhere. You, you're going to go and do this, you're going to do that. But Usually, it just depends. You do have the ability, but does it mean if you stay in Arkansas speaking Chinese, the chances are pretty low you're going to be rich like people think you're going to be. And, and that's because we don't have a large influx of Chinese immigrants. Is that it? We do have a we have a big group here, but you know, if I mean, like you have to find people who are interested in learning Chinese, doing business with people who are Chinese. And if you have that type of commerce going on, then that works really well. But I mean, knowing Chinese has saved me money. I can say that it has saved me money. Okay. Yeah. How so? So I, I wanted to buy something on um, from um, Alibaba and the reason that I knew Chinese and the person, her English was not that well. And she found out I spoke Chinese. She gave me at least uh, about 10% discount. And I wasn't expecting the discount only because I spoke Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you, unexpected connections. Okay. Um, how do, and I'm going to ask this for both countries, both experiences. So during your six months in China, how did Chinese people respond when you spoke their language? Uh, quite surprised. No, 
I'm gonna give you two parts, two parts of this story. Quite surprised that I knew Chinese because if you're with a group of people and they see a lot of European people, they're like, oh, they don't speak Chinese. And then they say me, they're like, oh, she African. So that's why people call me Beijo Nuwong because I said, if you're gonna call me African, you should call Be- me Beijo, Beijo Nuwong? Beijo, Beijo, Beijo Nuwong. So that means uh, African queen. I said, if you're gonna call me, if you're gonna call me African, you might as well call me a queen. So they, as I said, call me Beijo Nuwong, they make a joke, they laugh, and then they realize, oh, she still, maybe she don't know Chinese. But I think they really, like, they really knew is when they found out that you know you people you know any country any culture people always talk about people with their own language because they don't think you know and when they found out that i knew then it was like they could see they were kind of like maybe we should think about the things that we said but just because i'm black and i'm in China, i don't understand what they're saying so someone so to clarify they were discover in this moment in this story someone had said something insulting about you and you responded, I assume, and that's how they knew that you knew the language. Is I hearing that right? Yeah, or they say something that's rude or derogatory. I'm like, you might want to think about if the people you're around actually speak your language because they might speak your language. <laughs> and you're saying that in Chinese. Yeah, so it's yeah. Like they're like, oh, and you know, they're like, oh, right. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like, don't be sorry now. Like, don't, don't be sorry now. Don't be sorry. Too late. Too late. So I just tell them that, like, the most, like, I don't know, I opening thing was when I could understand me being in China and you have met anyone that was African American before, or even anyone who's black. I don't know, depending on the city you're in. So they want to take pictures with you. Like, say I go to a park or, they want to take pictures. They take pictures from a distance of you, like you can't see them taking the picture. And then they come up there. Oh, can we take a picture with you? And then this, I said, I'm thinking we're at a park that, like a museum. I had to pay to go to the museum. So if you want to take a picture of me in the museum that I just paid, I would ask them to get to pay for the picture. Because remember, we're we're in a paid we're in a paid place. It's not free. Like if I want to go to the museum discovery, you can't just walk in. If, you, if you're gonna treat me like an exhibit, you need to pay. Mm-hmm. Nigga, like, what the? Pay? I was like, well, I'm an exhibit. I'm a human too. So if you want to, if you want to take a picture, you're gonna. Did, did, did some people really pay you? No, they didn't pay. They just looked at me like I was crazy. I thought that's fine. That's fine I, too. And then I think Welcome. they started to realize that I have feelings too, and I'm exactly. Kind of so no, exactly, exactly. Because and, and let me ask what I was gonna ask you. How did you interpret it? You took it kind of as an insult. Yeah, because I knew it was like they were taking. It wasn't like oh, I never met a black person before, but it was. They was more of I'm an exhibit. Like hey, can I take a picture with you so you can show that picture to everyone else? Oh, I saw a black person. I'm not a celebrity. There are other black people here in China, so why don't I say oh, can I take a picture with you? If I switch it up and say, well, I'm in China, can I take a picture? With you? The chances are pretty low that they might let me take a picture of them and say, oh, I want to show my family these Chinese people. Like you don't, you don't do that. Yeah, that's, and that's that's very bold. Like that's a very bold and courageous stance, and that response was very creative. It, I tried. I mean, there I had a lot of experience. Like between now and the other one, I went to the park. I was actually at a park because I was um, tutoring someone in English, actually in China, and the mother's daughter. She was like one, maybe two. And she had not seen anyone who was black. So she told her mother, she needs to, you know, she needs to use the umbrella or she needs to, you know, wash herself. She's so dirty. <laughs> but she didn't know. She's young enough not to have never met anyone who was black. Oh, my so, Lord. I said, no, it's fine because your child probably has never seen someone black. But no, she, she even knew some solutions for you. She needs less sun and she needs to clean up. You need to carry an umbrella. They call them umbrellas so you don't get dark in the sun. They say, oh, she needs to use an umbrella. And, 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 and that's a good stop right there because on TV, I've seen that. Is that really true that they do that a lot for themselves? They two, have two reasons to stay lighter. And the other one is the soot that comes from like the pollution will get on their clothes. 
So they use the umbrella to um, keep their clothes from getting the oh. from the, from the atmosphere. Deep. Okay, deep. Um, but that is interesting, and that, that's a good response. That is like I haven't gotten that before. Like even guests on the show, um, and I, that didn't happen to me. Now, one thing that I've heard from people, they'll uh, they'll say our hair is a conversation. Like when we've gone abroad, either somebody will touch it, and we have to say you don't know, or they may ask to touch it. I've gotten that, but I don't remember anybody just wanting to take a picture of me because I was black. <laughs> no. But yeah, I get it. I, I definitely, especially with our history here in the U.S. and really worldwide, we were treated like exhibits for so long. And 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 of course, they don't know that or maybe they do and don't care. But we know our history and we know we don't want to feel that way again. So I get it. You know, between that and what's that guy's name? Chris Rock. They're like, oh, do you know Chris Rock? Those are the, I always get those things. Those, it, it's like, oh, do you know Barack Obama? Like... I was like, well, I, but you know what? I mean, the Barack, that's not, I mean, of course you won't know him like, duh, you're not going to know him, but that's not an insulting question. Like, I'm going to tell you an insulting question I got. Somebody asked me when I was in Spain, do I twerk? Now that was insulting. That's insulting. But I'd, I'd, rather, I'd rather be asked about no Barack Obama. <laughs> that's like, better to me. They say, oh, and they don't know any other English. They'd be like, Barack Obama. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. That I got that in. Um, I think that's worldwide because my friend and I went to Dubai in 2017, and we went down. We probably shouldn't have done this. Like, we were both women, and I think we forgot that in some countries being a woman is dangerous. Anyway, we went down this strip, and uh, it was a tourism strip, but still, we're two young, you know, black women, and it's just the 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 shopkeepers were hounding us left, right, left, right. And all they were doing was yelling out anything black they could say. Jamaica, Jamaica, Michelle Obama. Uh, they just started with random stuff that had nothing to do with us. That's all they could think of to say. But it made me laugh. I didn't feel as offended. It, it's weird. Like they do that. Like they recognize. They say, "Oh, they you like look like you have money." They do that. They did that to me in China. I wanted to buy this Hello Kitty blanket. And I there's like there's a translation for this that said Waluo um, Sweisha. So I'm an international student. Wabukui yo gongzo. So I can't have a job. So you can't be an international student and work. You can't you know I don't have a work visa. Could you get Wabpianita? Could you get this to me cheaper? Or could I buy this cheaper? And they're like, okay. But you know, if the first time they find out you're American, they just see money. Oh yeah, and I've, I've heard I've heard that worldwide too. I've heard that specifically then in Africa. I, I watched some YouTube channel with some people who were talking about Africa experience, and they say it's, it's everywhere. But there, they they mention how the people are trying to really get over on you, so you got to know how to bar, barter and bargain. But and that's the thing too. In a lot of other countries, you know, in the U.S. Consumers have rights and 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 knowledge. You know, we go to the store, we expect to see the price tag. A lot of other countries, they don't have price tags on stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, you you know the price when you go to the cashier, and the cashier may change the price all of a sudden. You don't know, you know. That's how it is. I don't mm-hmm. think uh, necessarily one hundred percent about them changing the price of the cashier, uh, mm-hmm. the cash register, but definitely there. Unless you were in a store, there was a set price. If you're at a grocery store, you know what is the set set. But if you go to the street, a market, you yeah. have to barter. Like I had to barter for that blanket, and then you hope they don't try to look in your wallet and see those American dollars. Like I'm like, <laughs> you try because they like, they look at it like, oh. Then he said, oh, where do you go to school at? I go to school for down the street. Where are you from? And I'm making sure I've already sealed this deal before we really start talking. Like, uh, I'm from the United States, and they're like. <laughs> you know, they, they're like, oh, I really put a, like, sometimes they like, can I, can I have some American money? Can you pay me in American money? I thought, why would, why would I do that? Your money is worth like six times less than mine. Like, I, but, but you know what? Stop right there. That's a good question. Did you get an answer? Is it maybe because the collectible? Do you have, did you come up with an answer or find out why they wanted that? The money? They're American gonna, money. Yeah, they're going to take the money and get more money. If you don't, like, you're like, oh, I don't have any Chinese U.S. or R&B, any Chinese money. So they just basically going to take your money. Oh, the because they know for more. And is it is it yen? You don't have that right on the currency? It's R&B. So it's renminbi, what was U.S. So, like, I wish I had some so I could show you on this live um, with me. But the Chinese money... Um, 
it's worth so like one Chinese yuan it's worth um, I think it's seven maybe actually seven point five less than our one dollar so seven point five of their money equals our one dollar. Mm, okay. So they got to put more of their money to get to make our money. So if I give them one dollar, they just and they only wanted one UN, they actually made um, more money off of me. Like I would just be like giving money away. Mm -hmm. But if a person, if an uh, American didn't know that, they wouldn't realize what they had done by giving the USD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Now. So this is that, that one question went way off. So now back home here in the US, how do any how do people in general respond when they see you speaking Chinese? Black folks, European Americans, Chinese people here? How does how does how does it go here when you start speaking? I've heard it. So I've gotten a lot of crazy looks, but the very first look I've ever got from someone that I guess in public that I really remember recognizing was uh graduation one of my friends her dad was coming so she was walked the she was graduating but her dad came for the graduation so i between like the translating stuff telling him what he should do and where he should go and the people just like this girl sitting here and she just started speaking chinese um to this man i guess they didn't know that i knew this person was sitting aside because his daughter was graduating and i was helping him who get lost and then there are times where I can be talking uh, to, to my husband or I can be talking to her friends and people, or I can just be like, I used to go to the gym and I would, you know, FaceTime my friends that I don't get to see. And I would talk to them in Chinese while I was at the gym and they're like, studying or talking. So now, now would they ask you or are you just going by the looks? The looks were, I think maybe someone did ask me once, but after that, you know, some people are just too uh, scared to ask or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you know what you mentioned, your husband, that's a great segue. So as you all noticed, audience, her last name is Wong. Yeah. Uh, and, and so your husband is, is Chinese. So um, I'm sure that enables you to have practice at home. Do you all speak one language or the other at home or both? We speak both. It just depends by, because some stuff make more sense in English and some stuff make more sense in Chinese. But, you know, if on a daily usage, you're using English. So a lot of times that he's using English. But if it's like something like he'll say something and I'm like, oh, no, no, no. no. And I tell him in Chinese and he's like, no, I'm not going to do that. I say, oh, OK. Like, can you take out the trash? Can you do this? And he's like, I don't speak English. I say, you don't? <laughs> you don't. So I, there, there are moments like that, but uh, there's times where he's forgotten things in Chinese because at work he's thinking in English. So, so how did you all, uh, for those who don't know, meet? You know, was, did you meet him in China? How did that go? No, we met at Arkansas State University. Actually, I was his ESL partner, like one of his, his third, I think his third ESL partner at the school. So I would I met him while I was uh, taking I was taking Chinese at night. That's the first time I ever met him, like on the sidewalk going to my Chinese class. But I didn't like know know him. I was in his part, his ESL partner, because you know at the school, like it's hard to keep an ESL partner because school could be really tough as a, as a student anyhow, and actually taking time out to help somebody study. So I would help him with English things that he didn't understand. Okay, and and years later, ta-da, you're married. Okay, well, that's cool. That's, that's cool. All right, so we're gonna wrap on up. Um, what do you recommend to anybody watching and they're interested in learning Chinese? What resources or in, internal things they need to get over? Just generic tips for people who want to learn Chinese. I guess a few generic tips. I would say just don't give up. Don't be intimidated because it's a doable thing. We can learn Chinese. You just have to think that it's not the hard, I'm gonna say it's not the hardest language. People think it's really a hard language. It's, uh, my lights just went off in my classroom. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it, it looks nice. It, it, it added something. It's okay. <laughs> so it's just like some people, they feel nervous about learning Chinese or they're gonna get it wrong. I always tell people the same things I did in China. You just do it scared. 
I've done a lot of things scared. Just do it scared if you could just jump in and learn that language. And there are plenty of resources out there. Um, you can easily like um, you know do use Duolingo. And there are plenty of Chinese people who will probably be happy to help um, teach people like Chinese or help with the conversation. Like I would be help happy to help people learn Chinese because I do have one student and he's much older. So you never know, like, hey, you can do it regardless what age you are. You can learn Chinese. It's a doable thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Very encouraging. So now that you mentioned you're willing to help, if anybody does want to reach out to you, how should they contact you? Um, they can email me at, I think it's a learn Chinese at LR mm -hmm. at gmail.com. You can email me that way. I don't have a Facebook page um, for it, but it's, I, I believe the email that I was using was learn Chinese. Um, LR, let me now, do you check it enough? Because I don't want them to send it to you and, and answer. Okay. It's the right one. I do check okay. it, but it's not an email address that I say out loud a lot to me. I got you. I got you. I'll wait. I'll wait for confirmation. Mm -hmm. Let me check really quickly to see. Because I was like, well, I, I feel like that's the correct one. Okay. It is. I could check my phone, but I never thought about that. And you can always let me know later and I can put it in the caption if you want to do it that way. Okay, yeah, I can let you know because like, I do have it. It's just my, I'm not sitting at my regular. Off, off the top of your head, to. off the top of your head, you think it's learn Chinese, L R at Gmail. Yeah, that's what, oh, here, is it here? Yes, it's learnchineselr at gmail.com. That is correct. So I was like, ooh, thinking I had got it wrong. All right, muy bien, perfecto. Well, that is it. Eso es todo. For ten oh, excuse me. That is it for tonight. That's it for the interview. Actually, I can't say thank you enough. I learned some things, and I definitely applaud you um, for, for taking on the task, for going through the ups and downs you had to go through. And, and, and look at you now. I'm sure you're going to go even farther. Maybe learn Chinese LR or skyrocket. Who knows, you know? So either <laughs> way, but thank you so much for your time and uh, what you educated us on. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Share, share. Make uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> okay. So uh, look at more like you say, Bukochi. So you say, share, share. Thank you. So I said, uh, Bukochi, like no problem or make sure. No problem. Bukochi? Bukochi. Bukochi. It's close enough. I Dang. know. <laughs> I know what you're saying, but it it takes a sometimes it takes a while, but it's completely fine. I like I when I hear it, I'm like, okay, I know what she's saying. Well, there we go. I'm gonna end, I'm gonna end with that. The, the end. But thank you so much, Ashley. And you have a good night. All right, you too. Bye. Bye. <laughs>